Hey Mushroom Nerds, it's Anna McHugh. It has been very dry in my part of the South, but I want to share with you a number of mushrooms that I found today, starting with one of my favored edible mushrooms. This gorgeous little uh, coral-shaped fruiting body is called the crown-tipped coral mushroom. The scientific name is Artemisces pixidatus, and pixidatus is a reference to these little uh, sort of boxy crenellations or crowns at the top of these uh, individual uh, pieces of the fruiting body. It's edible. When cooked, it's very delicious in my opinion. It goes well with rosemary. It grows on wood, and that is an important feature because there are a lot of other coral-shaped mushrooms on the forest floor uh, and others that also do grow on wood. You know, most of them are harmless, but here's a good example of something that looks pretty similar to your uh, Artemises or your crown-tipped coral. But this, I think it's a Phaeoclavulina I don't know. I didn't spend much time with it, but it was growing on the ground and it also doesn't have these very distinctive uh, sort of box shaped tips. And I will show you a fruiting body that I think may, oh yes, that'll come into focus a little bit better. So you can see they're like these little, uh, you know, pleasing stumpy things. And by way of comparison, a lot of your other uh, sort of coral shaped mushrooms, these are uh, spiky and a little bit irregular. And uh, you know, it is beyond the scope of this video and beyond the scope of my brain to teach you too much about coral mushrooms, except to say when people talk about coral mushrooms, they could be uh, referring to a vast array of species and genera and so you know it's good to specify sort of what direction you're going in now that said a lot of coral mushrooms are popular edibles so you have ground growing ramarium mushrooms they're sort of um, oftentimes really fleshy and lumpy and colorful and uh, you know some of them are laxative in nature but a lot of people like to eat them uh, and there are a lot that are just gorgeous and then you also have these more uh, frail ones and artemises is a really great example of a uh it's like halfway between fleshy and leathery and again growing on wood with this sort of pale ivory colored fruiting body as these get older and this actually smaller one shows this feature the base of the stem starts to get a little uh darkened in color and often you'll find pretty large uh, colonies of this mushroom. I just have a few of these because I know where this stump is. And I'm like, I bet I'll find some babies. It's been dry for a month. Uh, but, you know, just a gorgeous mushroom and really, really fun to find and photograph. Although I will admit, challenging to photograph because even though these are just adorable little crenellations, it can be really hard to get the right contrast on them. So they look kind of, you know stumpy and spiky and then we're like is that a phaeoclavulina and you're in trouble on mushroom facebook and i uh, am totally not projecting things that have happened to me before all right so let's move on to another mushroom that i really like this is edible although i don't typically eat it because it's so small and often uh, a little bit not so much um like slimy but uh it does stain up your fingers a little bit but this is the flaming gold bolete ario boletus Ariflameus is uh, the scientific name, and it's part of one of my favorite genera of uh, bolete type mushrooms. And if you're not familiar, we've done this a million times on the channel, but if you uh, are new to mushrooming, bolete type mushrooms have a porous undersurface, so they don't have gills like slicey things. They have sort of this almost looks, uh, you know, sometimes can be very big pores, sometimes can be very tightly packed, but Ariobolitis is is one of the genera that's really common in the south and we have some really gorgeous sort of golden colored mushrooms in this genus and this is probably the most strikingly golden so it earned the name the flaming gold bolete uh, so in addition to it having this uh, sort of all around golden color you have a uh, yellow porous undersurface and it's pretty tightly packed and then on the top it has almost uh, it, it's not so much roughened but oftentimes it seems to be a little pattern darker uh, and a little bit more orangey and a little more gold and then on your stem it is uh, smooth and 
it's like slightly streaky when the conditions are more dry sometimes you have these gorgeous almost like fluted uh, little streaks on the stem but these mushrooms don't tend to get very large and so there are a couple of other boletes uh, reti boletus ornatopes is another like strikingly large yellow bolete that you'll find in the woods and uh, you know by stature and also sort of by this golden color you can distinguish betwixt the two of them uh, I mentioned Ario boletus as a favorite genus because Ario boletus betula, the shaggy stalked bolete, and a variety of other just gorgeous uh, sort of golden colored, or they often have like little margins of gold color mushrooms that uh, I really enjoy finding in the summer. This is a mushroom I have not uh, identified. I have uh, taken a whack at it. I bring a book with me and I have a little bit of internet, but uh, I'm going to take a stab and call this Neoboletus xanthopus. Either way, this is in the Neoboletus genus. And when you start to get into this porous undersurfaced, like fruiting body type, things can get very, very difficult uh, for identification really rapidly. And so I, uh, sort of skip across the surface of the uh, the lake or the ocean that is bolete identification. But I really love these uh, neoboletus species because a lot of them have this sort of like either uh, orangey or sort of vermilion undersurface. And another thing that's really cool is this uh, thing that's called a sterile margin. And so the outside, you'll see this like really nice little flashy yellow ring on the outer perimeter of the mushroom. That's not just for uh, Neoboletus. Actually, the um, Areoboletus betula, the shaggy stalk bolete, a great summer edible and a great beginner mushroom, also has just this glorious sort of aura, this, uh, you know, sterile margin around it. But uh, you have a really tightly uh, sort of packed undersurface here of the porous layer. And then most remarkably, uh, a lot of boletes and, and uh, neoboletus in particular, um, they will stain blue really rapidly. And so that's an oxidization reaction that happens just the second I start to cut into this yellow flesh, it turns uh, radically blue and then sort of a blackish blue. There are a lot of other boletes that stain blue to varying degrees. And one of the things that I think is interesting about this particular uh, critter that I have is that, uh, you know, it has this sort of unadorned yellow stem and then this sort of scarlety colored uh, surface underneath with the sterile margin and a little bit of a sort of rosy colored, not dingy, but just not super flashy and colorful cap and this really rapid staining. Um, and so that puts me in the direction of the uh, Neoboletus xanthopus. Uh, xanthopus being um, a Latin epithet that refers to a yellow foot. And so I am going to see if I can confirm that. This is sort of new territory, but this is also a fun way to uh, sort of highlight these beautiful bluing reactions. Like I just love to fiddle around with boletes, but also let's talk about boletes and edibility because these mushrooms Mushrooms are uh, edible, and a lot of people love their Neoboletus, uh, you know, edible mushrooms. However, a lot of mushrooms that you'll find in the woods are already being eaten and occupied by maggots. And even ones like this one, it looks like it has a nice crisp cap. Oh, it kind of does. But you can start to see a little bit of maggoty damage uh, very, very quickly, especially in these, um, you know, fatty bases of the mushroom. So it's really kind of um, cool texture wise, I think. But once the these mushrooms start to get um, buggy, I leave them for the um, organisms that got to them first. But one more time, I just want to highlight this beautiful sort of uh, pinky, rosy colored uh, porous undersurface with this nice yellow margin and such rapid uh, oxidization and such rapid bluing. You go from, you know, yellow to blue in just a matter of seconds. So uh, I look forward to getting a little more information about this one. There's uh, another mushroom mushroom that behaves this way called the scarlatina that is neoboletus um something something else uh so i'm gonna move on because i've got about uh as much information that i have in my head about this mushroom uh out to you so let's talk about another bolete that i am uh far more familiar with it is not edible but it is uh aesthetically very pleasing to me so this is the violet gray bolete 
The scientific name is uh, Tylopilus plumiovilaceus. And I remember that because it has this really pleasing sort of plum purple color on the stem. Tylopilus is a genus that consists of a lot of different mushrooms and some of them are edible and good. And some of them are just so stinking bitter you can't contemplate eating them. And uh, the violet gray bolete Tylopilus plumiovilaceus falls into the like really, really bitter category. But I still love to find it because it's just such a like plump and uh, sort of um, almost looks like a blobby waxy candle oftentimes on this purpley stem, a little bit on the streaky side. And then if you turn it over, it has a sort of lilac gray, almost like suede shoes softness to it so that's pretty neat and then underneath the cap uh, you have a uh, white undersurface and again it's porous and uh, as you can see it's really tightly packed and it does not stain or bruise the way that uh, our last mushroom did so you know it is sort of consistent in its coloration I'll show you a couple of the um, other specimens that I found. I think this is my favorite of the bunch because it has that sort of uh, quality of this purple patina on it and a little bit of this like warped wobbly stuff going on. And that's kind of unusual. Like uh, you have this sort of folded thing. And uh, so, you know, you can tell that this mushroom has um, a little bit less of the like chunkiness of some of the other boletes that you will find. Uh, and then again, this sort of gray uh, color on the top could be a little deceptive because you're like, oh, that looks boring. But then when you um, open it up and look underneath, you have just this glorious, beautiful thing. And also, let's see, these have been completely hollowed out by bugs. So yet again, highlighting how maggots are probably the primary audience for a lot of these bow leap mushrooms in particular. Uh, but you know, nonetheless, I love to observe them. And sometimes I get to eat them if the bugs um, have not uh, beat me to the punch. Okay, so what else do we want to talk about? Oh, I just want to share with you another uh, Tylopilus. Uh, I have not identified this one either, but it has an interesting reaction that a lot of Tylopilus mushrooms have, which is a sort of like browning reaction. And so like, you know, the blue thing sort of points you in one direction for boletes, and this, uh, you know, white undersurface and browning reaction can point you in the direction of a few different uh, Tylopilus species. And some of them are uh, palatable and tasty. Now this one I know I can just tell is bug eaten. However, um, given that boletes in general, like there are some that are toxic and poisonous, but in Tylopilus, you, you just, it's like, <laughs> it either tastes so terrible you can't eat it or it's okay to eat. I'm going to give it a Holy toes. Yes. So this is a very, very bitter species, whichever one it is. And, um, you know, it, it basically just lights your mouth up with a very unpleasant bitterness and not the kind of bitterness is like, Oh, fancy. We'll make a cocktail with that. But like, Oh, my tongue really does not believe that this is food. And, uh, you know, I, I have no idea if any amount of processing would fix that problem for you. All right. Before I conclude, I want to talk about, uh, these like really grotesque but also just completely magnetic um giant uh lepidella amanita mushrooms so this is amanita ravenelli just for a point of reference it's about uh here we go, about the size of the diameter of my hand you will notice i'm not handling it because well the reasons are too threefold firstly it is completely filled with beetles and bugs. And so these mushrooms smell particularly foul and like very, very um, pungently of chlorine, but also a little like uh, mushroomy and a little bit meaty. So I compare it to the smell of a peed in pool. And so these mushrooms are sort of like grotesque, but they also are magnets for beetles and for other bugs that obviously are not only indifferent to, but really into the uh, flavor of this um, pine cone amanita is the uh, common name assigned to amanita ravenelli. Now, uh, this is an immature specimen, but you can get to know like a lot of different amanita mushrooms based on what's going on at the base of the mushroom. And uh, amanita ravenelli is part of a section of the amanita genus generically called lepidellas. And there's a lot going on with like, if you start to study amanita, 
That is a genus that has profound diversity, a tremendous amount of really, really gorgeous mushrooms in it. But also as you unfold that, you start to say, okay, I need to slice up that genus into different sections to start to parse it out. And so that's where uh, sort of the Situ the situation with the Lepidellas are is one of the sections of the Amanita genus. And in general, you have these mushrooms that are sort of pale colored, oftentimes preposterously large, and with a big bulbous base. And I, this is beyond the scope of this video to go into a lot of the details around it. I simply wanted to highlight it because it is just so ridiculously large. And like the way uh, that I encounter mushrooms is um, increasingly more aesthetic than uh, culinary. And so I am out in one of my favorite chanterelle patches, but it was so hot and so dry for a month. There's just nobody awake. But at the same time, I can find this pinecone amanita that smells just gloriously like chlorine and is just very gross. And it's, you know, as long as my forearm. And I can't help but kind of love where I live and love the hobby that I have because now my hands are covered with the smells of the forest. Uh, I've rambled at you, I think, uh, good enough and long enough, but I am also delighted that mushroom season is really truly upon us. I am in Raleigh, North Carolina, and uh, we had a month solid of just no rain whatsoever, and then we got about three and a half inches caught up and then accelerated ahead of our sort of annual average for this time of year. So I am excited and babbling and hopefully have shared some information with you that is of some value. Take care.